thing. But I think it's important that you guys understand a little bit more about Iraq and Afghanistan and the operation we've done, which is in um, Iraq. So we have Operation Dirty Freedom, which is Afghanistan. We had Operation Iraqi Freedom, which is where Scott was injured. And now we have Operation New Delta. Um, Okay, I don't know if you guys know. You guys know where Iraq and Afghanistan are? Right? You guys know how far from it is? Okay, well, from where I live, Iraq is 10,000 miles and Afghanistan is around 7,000 miles. So when I sent Scott into the army and he went into Iraq, he went 10,000 miles away from home. It's a long way. Um, sorry guys. Okay, what is an IED? An IED is an improvised explosive device. It is a bomb that is planted in the ground by the enemy and it obviously blows up. This is, an IED, this is one of an IED that was buried in the ground that was planted. What is an RPG? Black or propeller grenade. Um, anybody who plays Call of Duty or any military game? Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, a Humvee. A Humvee is a military vehicle that is a four wheel drive vehicle that can go over multiple terrains. And that's what our military uses. Cool. Cool. This is Scott and his own baby. Before he was injured in our life. Unfortunately, a Humvee hitting an IED equals that. This is Scott coming on fire after it was hit with him in it. This is his Humvee afterwards. Scott was sitting right there. An EMP. This is a new type of bomb. Formed. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> it's a, an explosive formed projectile, not formed, sorry, I got it. What that is, is they take anything from a coffee can to a 50 gallon drum, they fill it up with explosive, then they lay a copper plate on it, they melt that copper plate down, and when the bomb explodes, the copper plate forms a copper ball that goes through everything. I know this picture's a little blurry, but this hole is where an EFP went through a door of a company, went out the other side of the company, through three houses, and they never found the copper ball that kept them. They're very powerful, they're very strong. Wounds aboard. This is Scott in the hospital. Uh, in January, Scott was hit in November. He spent five months in the hospital. How do you tell if somebody's been in the military? You guys know? They could have a prosthetic, could be a prosthetic leg, could be a prosthetic arm, could be a nose, could be an ear. We have a friend, he lost both of his ears. He had to make him Spock ears. So now you're running around with pointed Spock ears on, Make sure everybody laugh. Could be a wheelchair, a military backpack, military shirt. Could be a lot of things that signify the military. Could be burn scars. That's how you can tell if somebody's been injured. Memorial tattoos. 
military tattoos. They like to show how proud they are of being in the military. And wear bracelets. Scott has one for his friend. They could have a purple heart on their car. They could have it on a backpack. They could have it on a hat. They can have a purple heart. That lets you know that that person was injured in battle. You only get that purple heart if you are a combat injured veteran. PTSD and TBI, post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury. These are the hidden injuries of war. And you guys may know somebody who's been in battle, who's been in war. They may not show any physical signs of trauma, but they could be pretty inside. Your generation is going to see 50,000 physically wounded veterans. Could be up to 100,000 with PTS and TBI. Could be even more. That's a lot of injured military men and women coming back from two wars. Many of them are going to be burned or disfigured. Many are going to be able to be missing an arm, a leg, be in a wheelchair, be permanently disabled. We actually have a lot now that are missing all four limbs, or they're missing three limbs. So how do you react when you see a wounded soldier? Yes, no? This is our spot. They shine it. It's really cool. Be aware not to stare at their injuries. Don't try to look away. Look them in the eye, walk up to them, and compassionately ask, can I ask you what happened? Can I ask if you were in the war? They want to tell you their story. They want you to know what happened to them. They really want to share. That's what it's about. They want to share their story. Again, ask, can I ask what happened? Take a stand and shake their hand. Say thank you. Acknowledge who they are and realize that just because they may look like this, they're still human beings. They're still, they have feelings. You know, just because somebody is scarred, disfigured, has any type of disability doesn't mean that they are not the same as you inside. That they still don't want to play video games, that they still don't want to watch movies, that they don't want to hang out with their friends. They do, they just look different. And some of them can be kind of scary. But you know what? They now have to go from looking like us to looking like this. And so, that's what they want. They want to be right. Saying that, this has got two hours before the bomb hit his home seat, or his home seat hit the bomb. I would like to now introduce you to my personal hero, Sergeant Scott Stevenson. How y'all doing today? Yeah. Happy to be out of class? Yeah. I don't blame you. I'm more fun. <laughs> now, I'm 27 now, so I'm probably old to a lot of you guys. Um, I joined the Army right out of, or about a year out of high school. I was 19. I played football. I played basketball. I played soccer. I played street hockey. I played everything I could get my hands on. I was an athlete. It's what I did. So. When I joined the Army, it was just another way for me to keep being athletic. Um, I spent about 13 weeks at Fort Benning, Georgia. Anybody know where Fort Benning, Georgia is? Any military brats in here? There we are. All right, so Fort Benning, Georgia um, is an infantry basic training post. You go down there, they learn you how, they teach you how to shoot, how to run, jump through the mud, crawl under stuff, it's a lot of fun. It's like playing Call of Duty, only you get to do it in real life. Yeah. 
<clears throat> so after that, I spent about six weeks in airborne, uh, airborne school where I got to run with a heavy book bag on all the time, jump out of planes and land on the ground really hard. It's a lot of fun until you hit the ground. And, oh, good. Are oh, you gonna give me this? Well, I was loud. I'm loud enough. Who? <laughs> all right. So I went to my airborne infantry school. I got to jump out of planes, learn how to do movements at, once I got out of planes. And it's, it's really a lot of fun. Um, after that, I went to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, where I spent about a month and a half. Um, I did about two weeks worth of training. I, I broke my foot um, and had to go to Fort Richardson, Alaska, and, which is really, really far away um, and really cold. I play, uh, we did, uh, did a lot of training up there. We did door kicking, kicking houses, walking in, practicing, all the cool stuff you get to see on Call of Duty, and uh, kept training and trained and trained hard. And our training is like anything you guys do for football, basketball. It's your training. You're doing everything you can to get up to the game because when that game comes, you're going to play your heart out. That's what this is like for us. Um, so I spent about a year and a little bit over, a year and some change, training up, going through, jumping out of planes, shooting guns, and um, then in October of 2006, I deployed to Iraq. I went to Kuwait for about two and a half weeks where I had to adjust to the climate, get used to the heat. Because like I said, I went from training in Alaska where it's really cold to Iraq where it's really hot. Now I couldn't figure out why they made us train in the cold just to go to the heat. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to you guys. If you can figure it out, let me know. Um, so I went to Iraq and about four, four and a half weeks in, my Humvee struck an IED. It was composed of four large artillery rounds, like in the picture, with 10 gallons of gasoline that was used in accelerant. I was immediately engulfed in flames. Um, I sustained 66% third and fourth degree burns. So 66% of my body, two thirds of my body is burned. I almost lost my left arm. I lost my left leg eventually due to burns and <laughs> uh, I suffered some, some other injuries. Um, you guys know what strokes are? I had three of those. Uh, I lost some internal or some, some organs, but through it, I'm still here. I persevered. I stuck it out. I made it through it. So one thing to remember is no matter how bad it gets, it'll get better. You can make it through it. No matter how bad your day is, there's another day. Tomorrow will come. So I made it. I'm here. I've put three and a half years of constant physical therapy working to try to get where I am now. I just got my leg last year. It took me four years to get a leg. And I'm actually coming up on my anniversary date next week, right after Thanksgiving. <sighs> so after that, I came home and I noticed that things were a little different. People looked at me a little different. They didn't really understand. They would look at me maybe like I was scarier, that there was something wrong with me because of the way I look now. And through doing that, it, me, me noticing that, it took a toll. It took a toll on me. I started, to, I started to get frustrated and upset because of everything that I've done. Now, here I'm being treated differently. Now, you guys probably know people that look a little bit different. Maybe talk a little different, act a little different than you. That's okay. Everybody's different. 
the person next to you, you might not give them a chance to get to know them because of how they look, how they talk. I'm here to tell you, that's not right. You guys should get every, give everybody a chance because you might not know that person's story. You might not know what they've been through. And that person might have something amazing that they can tell you. That, that person might do the same, like the same things, the same video games, the same books, the same types of movies. But you'd never know that unless you gave them a chance. So, me and my mom, about a year ago, about a year and a half ago, started Tempered Steel. What my organization does is we bring guys like me and guys, some of the guys like that are in the pictures, and we come out and we get to talk to you guys, to tell you our stories, to tell you what happened to us, and to tell you that it's okay to be different. It's okay to look different, because we're still the same person. Me, I play Call of Duty all the time. I just got Modern Warfare 3. Yeah. <laughs> And for those of you that haven't played it yet, it's awesome. She heard them say, it's a boy. She watched him play, she packed his toys, driver's license, cap and gown, to uniform and army proud. Medals on the humidor, and headlines scream they're sending more. He goes again, she waits at home, they call her on the telephone. at him, a different man lifts his chin, and then she says, thank you, son, from the home of the brave, for standing tall when others looked away. They all applaud when you walk by. him on the street with no idea he's why they're free she holds the door he makes his way he looks into her eyes to say
You can see there's all different sorts of injuries. All sorts of different injuries. And I know you guys are young, but the average age of our wounded soldier is 23. 23. So they're not a lot older than you guys, and now they have to go through the rest of their lives looking like this. So we just want you to understand, you know, who you're feeling the boxes for, and the fact that these men and women may be your neighbors someday. You know, they may be friends with your family members. You may have a family member that goes to Iraq or Afghanistan. So that's what we want to share with you. Don't stare, just ask. Wow. So, you guys seen all the pictures? A lot of my friends, and um, who's ready to see some scars? You guys ready? Nice. You guys aren't excited. What's wrong? <laughs> All right. So I told you guys I lost my left foot. I almost lost my arm. Burns, shrapnel. And uh, it doesn't work so well, but I can still play Call of Duty, so that's what matters. <laughs> um, in saying that, uh, I think we're running short, so are you guys ready to do some question and answer stuff? You guys can ask me questions? Now I'm going to tell you, I'm an open book, so anything you can come up with, ask me. And if you guys want my gamer tag, I'll give it to you later. <laughs> What's your what? Tempered steel is a metal that you can put through fire and it comes out stronger. Now, me and my squad leader, after we got hurt in our Humvee, had these bracelets made. And they say, brothers born by, not, uh, excuse me, brother, uh, brothers not born, but uh, brothers through the fires of hell. And this tempered steel and the American military is the only thing that you can put through fire and it will come out stronger. Make sense? Make sense? Okay. Um, when my Humvee uh, got hit by the bomb, a piece of metal, which uh, flying metal we call shrapnel, it went through and it hit the bone and it took my arm off. Oh. Almost. There was still some stuff holding it together, but. Uh, how did you, why did you go on, why did you go on that mission? And well, what were you doing? <laughs> um, I went on the mission because it was my day. It was my, my turn to rotate in. Um, what I was doing is actually we were on a combat patrol. We were driving around looking for insurgents and looking for IEDs. And uh, matter of fact, I got hit about an hour after I had, uh, we just got done chasing some guys down. So we chased them down, did some hand swabs. They came back clean. We jumped back in the trucks and uh, took off. And about an hour later, boom goes the dynamite. Um, I'd always had a, a, a pulling towards the Army, uh, well, the military in general. Um, as a young kid, I liked to, about your guys' age, I always liked to play soldier. I liked to run around with plastic guns with my brothers. And um, as I got older, I realized that that was kind of my calling. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, I, liked, I liked the physicality of it. I liked to be physical and do things like that. And I'm a really good shot. How many people were in the truck with you in the Humvee? There were five in my Humvee, and there were three other Humvees behind me. Only two, well, only three of us, four of us. So four of us got hurt. Two of us had to come home, and the other two got to stay in country. 
My medical care, um, I got my medical care in uh, Fort Sam Houston, uh, Brook Army Medical Center, San Antonio, Texas, the number one burn hospital in the United States. Was I scared to go in the Army when I joined? No. I was excited. <laughs> I was like, I get to cool, do all kinds of cool stuff. Yes. I was very, very scared. Um, it's, I was awake through it. I remember the whole thing. So it was, it was terror, there was a lot of fear. But through it all, I just, all I can remember is how much I told myself it's I'm not gonna die because I'm not done. She said you can applaud that. I was in the Army for two years before I got hurt, and then I was in the Army for about 20 years, two and a half years after I got hurt. I don't remember feeling pain. Um, part of it is because I was in shock. The other part is because the fire immediately burned through uh, my sensation nerves, which are the nerves that allow you to feel stuff on the surface. Are you proud of what you did? Yes, I'm extremely proud of what I did. Um, to me, what I did saved four other people in my truck by me taking the hit. So I'm extremely proud. What <laughs> <laughs> what level am I on Modern Warfare 3? I'm, uh, I'm level 30. I've only got to play it for a little bit. <laughs> um, actually, like my friends from high school and stuff? No, I, I joined by myself and made friends as I went along. Um, he he survived. He didn't sustain any injuries from the uh, from the IED, but he has severe PTSD now. Um, he he can't go near Humvees, and he has a really hard time even being in vehicles. He was the driver. He yeah, he was my driver. Um, he he blames, he blames himself for what happened to me. Was it easy for me to do all the exercises in the army? I couldn't. Because, I, you were in sports. because I was in sports. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, my me being an athlete before made it easier for me to do what they were asking of me. I was able to run, jump, do push-ups and sit-ups easier. Um, due to what I had done previously. Uh, what did you say after you got hurt? Uh, what do you mean? Like, after you did so well. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I spent um, most of my time going to physical therapy and recovering and uh, trying to get that promotion I was supposed to get before I got hurt. <laughs> Which you got. Which I did get. <laughs> Why are you for me, it was the it was my own personal strength and the army mentality that they had instilled in us to adapt and overcome. That no matter what you go through, you can adapt to your environment, adapt to you what your surroundings, and you can overcome it. Okay, guys, we have time for one more. The only the best one, the United States Army. Who won? Applaud <laughs> when you walk by. You are the hero in my eye. Thank you guys. You guys were awesome. Thank <laughs> you.
People pass him on the street No idea he's why they're free She holds the door, he makes his way He looks into her eyes to say Thank you guys have fun. Yeah. Have a good day class.